Hi, it's John Kelly. In this module, we're going to discuss auditing by redoing the accounting and why that's boring and time consuming and why we don't want to do it. So as always, we're going to talk about how we can be efficient and effective and redoing the accounting often is not an efficient and effective way of doing things. We want to follow professional standards and we want to document what we have done properly. Now this is an easy thing to fall into. It's kind of our first instinct as auditors and we do get lovely documentation. We've picked 30 invoices and we've got the numbers all listed and we can write down that we saw the 30 invoices and we agreed them to a shipping order or something. So it's, uh, it's lovely documentation. But if any clients have a computerized system, and that's going to be a running joke here, almost everyone has a computerized system, and the odds are that that test is going to work. If we pick 60 invoices from the computerized accounting system, well, the client's just going to get those invoices by going and printing them out from the accounting system. So it's kind of self-fulfilling that the test will work, which is at least nice. We'll pick 30 items and they'll all agree and we'll put it in the file. But it is boring and time consuming and it would probably miss anything if it were going on. If there were fraud going on, having the client print out 60 invoices from the computer system and us look at them or agree them to something would probably completely miss fraud if there were any. So it's probably ineffective as well as being boring and time consuming. We also need to remember that research has shown that tests of detail, both substantive and control tests of detail, are at the very bottom of the value heap in terms of finding misstatement. If we are doing these extensive tests of detail for the purpose of trying to find out whether there is material misstatement, they will probably be in the least effective group of procedures we could select. Now, on the other hand, unfortunately, boring and time-consuming if we do suspect material misstatement, it may be the only thing we can do is an extensive substantive test of detail. Though I do recall a time we had picked 20 inventory items and done price testing and found that rather a lot of them contained errors and more or less were able to conclude that the client had just done the price testing wrong. And we had several options. We could have tried to extrapolate from our sample, but it was pretty small. So we then could have tested another 40 or 50 items and tried to extrapolate from that. But even then, we're still extrapolating from small numbers. And we were getting rather a large extrapolated error that concerned the client. What we in the end decided to do is we just turned the population back to the client and said, look, looks like you've done several things wrong here in pricing inventory. Please do it again. Once you've done it and can tell us that it's perfect, We'll take the population back, test it again, do 20 items, which we did, which they did and we did, found that at this time they were right on, they'd done it correctly, and we were able to accept the value of the population. And I think that's auditing rather than us redoing the accounting and redoing the price testing because we're the auditors and we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to check that it's right, not re-perform the price testing. Now this is kind of an auditor instinct to test and my example is an inspector looking at one of our files said to me, well I think you should have tested some transactions in this balance, it was material. And that's the standard auditor kind of response. My response was, yeah but the risk of material misstatement was low. And the other testing, the analytical and the control testing, the systems walkthrough we did that covered that particular balance was enough. And the inspector went, oh yeah, okay, you're right. So we don't care if the balance is material or not. Um, we care if the balance contains a risk of material misstatement. And cash could be a very small balance, but could have a significant risk of material misstatement. Property, plant, and equipment could be a very, very, very large number, but not have much risk of material misstatement at all. So we don't care if it's material. It's material, I should look at it is incorrect and that leads us to auditing by reperforming a bunch of transactions. Now reperformance is also bad because probably if there's something we're worried about going wrong 
management is probably far more concerned about the same issue than we are, and accordingly they have a way of checking, which we call an internal control. They have a way of making sure that all sales are recorded, that all sales are priced correctly. They have a way of doing that. And one would think that the clever way of doing the audit would be to follow along what management did, and perhaps there's a high-level control that we can follow to make sure that things are being done correctly, and that should be efficient and effective and quick and not boring, and we won't get covered in dust in the filing cabinet. So that, coupled with our analytical procedures and our risk assessment procedures, should probably be enough to prevent us from having to re-perform a bunch of transactions. Other thing, for instance, revenues. We have assessed all assertions as low risk of material misstatement, and our approach is to select 36 invoices three a month. And that's kind of a standard thing that we do all the time. But really, most of the items we're examining are dead. They were ordered, shipped, and paid for a long, long time ago. What really might this test find? We're just going to be agreeing something to something that it already agrees to. And isn't there a better way of doing this test? And if we do decide that what we really need to do is look at 36 invoices, I would assert that 36 is not enough. 3,600 might not even be enough for a large client if you really want to be able to come to a statistical conclusion about a large population like revenues. Maybe it's 36,000, I don't know, but 36 is probably not enough. And particularly if the system is computerized, where the computer performs every transaction the same way as every transaction before, 36 is too many and or not enough. The other thing is if we are going to do this, we're going to do this in one of two ways. One's boring and one is probably ineffective. If we say to the client, well, we don't want to spend a lot of time pulling all these documents. Can you please dig them up for us? Please find the 36 sales invoices. How are we really sure that the client is going to give us the right 36 invoices? Um, and not create something. If the invoice we asked for isn't really there, how do we know the client didn't make one up? Um, or alternatively, we do it ourselves and we stand at some filing cabinet and get paper cuts and get all dusty, and we have the client looking at us and going, I wonder why the auditor is doing it that way. We never, ever look at those documents. We, we are not even sure why we print them anymore because we have this nifty computerized system and we have simple ways of finding out on a daily and weekly and monthly basis the answer to all these questions the auditor has, but they're there looking at paper documents and we don't understand why. Another example cut off of sales, selecting 30 invoices before and after year end. Again, if the client has a computer, again, a joke, there is probably a computerized way and a better way for us to audit that the client finds out whether or not they did cut off right. And a way that is more in proportion to our assessment of risk of material misstatement. Now, if we knew that the client was in a great big mess, 30 before and 30 after might not be sufficient. But for a client where we think controls are good, where we've done a systems walkthrough and that's worked, we're probably wasting our time by doing this. And there's probably a better way a way of challenging management's assertion that they've done the cutoff correctly. So this is something that everyone should care about, partners should care about, because they complain about recoverability on their audits, and staff should certainly complain about it because they complain about boring work and long hours. So, thanks for listening.